Hi there, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm excited to introduce some updates made to the Essential Callout Effect templates. Now you have the option to animate out the title and track the callout title directly in the edit page. This feature is very handy if you want to track the title without the hassle of working with Fusion nodes in the Fusion page. Okay, here is a sample video, let's say we want to add a callout title to follow this moving vehicle. Drag the essential callout effect from the effects panel and apply it to the clip. We now have an animated callout title added to the scene. When it reaches the end of the clip, the title automatically animates out using the same animation settings, but in a reversed order. In the animation tab, you can adjust the duration using this animation out time parameter, which defaults to 30 frames. If you reverse the animation, the animation out will also change to hide the callout elements in reversed order. Similar to the animation in, you can set it to zero to disable the out animation. Before we move on to the tracking, let's move the playhead to the beginning and turn off the starting animation. This ensures that the title is visible at the beginning making it easier to adjust the title and call out pointer's start position. You can use the preset button to change the call out style. Okay, let's use this one. Make sure to enable the fusion overlay. Use the on-screen controls to move the call out pointer to the car and adjust the title position. This is really annoying. Oftentimes, the cursor won't return back to normal. I have to move the cursor out of the viewer and move back. Not sure if this just happened to me. I really hope DaVinci Resolve can address this soon. All right, this is good. Now we can go to the tracker tab in the inspector. Click the enable tracker button to activate the tracker and display the tracker settings. In the viewer, a tracker pattern rectangle becomes available. Drag the upper left corner handle to position the pattern box on the car. Resize the pattern and search area if needed. You can also adjust the pattern using the parameters in the inspector. Ensure the pattern displayed in the inspector is what we selected in the viewer. If they don't match, it could be due to the timing being out of sync, you can move the playhead around and then go back to the beginning to sync the playhead display and the fusion tracker time. Unlike the tracker node in the fusion page, the tracker used in this template only includes the settings required for the title tracking scenario. The frames per point is set to two frames, which means one keyframe is set every two frames. Depending on the speed of the object's movement, you can set this value to 1 for a more accurate result, although it may take longer to track. As the movement of the car is pretty smooth, we can increase this value, let's say, 6 frames, and click the track forward button to start tracking. Compared to a tracker node in the Fusion page, the Fusion overlay in the Edit page doesn't have the full capability of tracking controls, the tracking process doesn't move the playhead on the timeline, nor does it display the tracking progress. However, we can still tell that it's running by this moving vertical green line in the inspector. Once the tracking is completed, a status window pops up, where we can find the tracking range, total time and average speed. In the viewer, we can see a tracked path. And when we move the mouse over the line, it shows all the keyframes created by the tracker. If needed, you can drag and change the point to modify the tracking path. The adaptive mode is set to every frame by default, which is my preferred setting in most cases. Because the pattern can change from frame to frame. In this example, the car is turning. Let's try the none option and see what happens. Before starting a new tracking, we need to delete the previous tracking data. 
Right-click the track center parameter and select Remove the tracker path. Or simply double-click the track center parameter to reset. Move the playhead forward and then move it back to the beginning to ensure the tracking position is reset to the beginning. Start tracking. And it failed at the first turn, it couldn't finish the tracking. Because when this option is set to none, it always searches for the original pattern. But it couldn't find the same pattern as the car turns. So in this case, we can also try the best match option. It searches for the initially selected pattern, but with some tolerance. Clear the tracking data. Move the playhead to reset the tracking start position. Start tracking. And this option also works. Alright, this is how we utilize the tracker directly in the callout standard template. It's essentially a point tracker without zooming and scaling, which works well in cases like this one. But sometimes, it would be better to have the callout title scale or rotate accordingly. For instance, in this sample clip, the traffic is moving closer and the vehicles are getting bigger. It makes sense to have a scaling callout title that follows a car. To enable zooming and scaling for a tracked callout title, you can follow the steps outlined in the previous video. Or utilize the callout template pro version, which has two trackers to track an object. Apply the callout pro effect. Move to the beginning. Disable the start animation. Point the callout to the vehicle we are going to track. Change the callout style and size to your preference. Go to the tracker tab, enable the tracker. By default, only one tracker is enabled. Enable tracker 2. Now we have two trackers available in the viewer. Reposition the tracker 1 to track the top of the car. Set tracker 2 to track the headlight. Confirm the pattern displays are the selected areas. Start tracking. Wait for the tracking to complete. It took a while, but we got good results, as we see these two smooth tracking paths in the viewer. Play the clip. The callout title scales and rotates as the car approaches, as if it's attached to the car. We can now turn on the start animation. If you don't want rotating the title, you can uncheck the rotation option. Sometimes you may find that the pattern display is not showing correctly. In such cases, you can click the options underneath to reset. To restart tracking for only one tracker, let's say tracker 2. We can suspend tracker 1 to lock its tracking data and prevent additional changes. Remove tracker 2's current tracking data. Change the tracking pattern if required. Start tracking. Great, we now have retracked the second tracker based on the new pattern. All right, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please feel free to leave your comments and suggestions. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.